Hello and welcome to this lesson. So the Performer Suite is installed and configured and in this lesson I would like to talk about the basic functions that are interesting for the standard Performer Suite user. We'll take a look at this and answer the following questions. How is the Performer Suite organized? How do I find relevant objects? And what are the first insights provided by the Performer Suite? So let's open the Performer Suite to answer these questions. So here you can see the launcher and before the Performer Suite can be started, um, a new UI language can be selected. So it can be German or English. This selection refers only to the language of the UI elements and the texts, but not the language of the documentation, for example. Next, a user um, registration is required. So there are two different user types that can be selected to enter the Performer Suite. An application user who can, if not restricted by authorization, access all licensed SAP systems and an SAP, BWBO or HANA user who um, initially can only access the system he uses for the login or she uses for the login. After the user login, you can select a product. So you're just selecting which product should be initially starting. So you define more or less a starting point. Within the Performer Suite, you can still switch the products. So if I open DocuPerformer, I can still execute all the system scout functions. It can also be selected if the product selections should be skipped. So this, this option here can be selected. And this option can also be deactivated again in the personal settings. I can open the user information here, where I can then also find the setting skip product selection window, what I mentioned. And here I can also um, change my username, but of course this is the admin user and you're not able to change the username of the admin user. Um, if you have a standard user, then you're able to change the username. You can also change um, the full name, department and the email address. Okay, so I can also do a logout, so I can do a sign out um, if I don't want to continue with this user, or I can just click on a product. This is what I will do next. I will click on the DocuPerformer in order to start the Performer Suite. We now see the initial view of the Performer Suite. So how is the Performer Suite structured? On the top, we see the ribbon tabs. There we find the products, which I already mentioned, DocuPerformer System Scout, but also Migration Booster Translation Steward. We can also find the administration area and also a help area. Um, depending on what we selected in the ribbon tabs, different controls are displayed to us in the ribbon bars. So if I click for, on the System Scout, for example, I can find all the relevant analysis functions. If I click on administration, we can um, maintain the connection data and um, what we already learned um, the last time or we can do the synchronization and so on. This entities tab is always displayed and you cannot close it. In this tab you can find the object type tree on the left side and as well as the in entity grid itself. So the central spot of the performer suite where all synchronized objects are displayed. In the lower area you can find the system selection area if you click on this button. So here you can select a specific system in which you want to work. So I could just double click on BY2 or I could also click on select. Or if I just want to um, establish a connection to the system, I can also double click um, on this switch button off on. I already mentioned in the last lessons that you're able to add a description to a system. So you could do this during the installation or you can also do this after the installation if you go to SAP system and then to maintain SAP system description and level. And here first you can add the description once again. So you can say that this is your dev system for example, Jung system, the German description, or you can also assign the level and here you can also edit the available levels. For example, you can add more levels if those available uh, levels are not enough for you. So this is what you can do here and after the save you will see that this description will be displayed um, in this window. 
we are the connect button, you are able to connect to the selected system. So in this case, I can um, establish a connection to my A4H system. In addition, we can see here when the last synchronization was executed. We can see to which database the performer suite is connected and we can also see once again the user information which we can open via double click and here you can find the same, you can see the same window you already saw in the launcher. We can also see some shortcuts, so some shortcut buttons here. So we can jump to the synchronization for example by clicking on this button. We can also jump to the admin guide or we can open the document generation window. So this footer is always displayed regardless where you are working in the performer suite. So let's now talk about the central topic of the performer suite, the SAP objects. So depending on which system I'm connected to, different object types are available to me on the left side. So if I click on here on the HANA system, I will see calculation views, stored procedures. If I click on SSC, I will see stories, analytic, analyt analytic applications and so on. I'm currently connected to a BW system. That's the reason why I, why I see queries and composite provider and so on. When I click on queries, like I did before, you're able to see all the queries of the currently connected BW system here in the entity grid. The information in the columns is available to me offline and it is based on the data written to the database by the synchronization. I can expand the entity grid with more information in the form of columns. Therefore, I can right click on the column header here and I can select column chooser. And this small window shows me the, all the columns that I can potentially add to the entity grid. So for example, perhaps I want to compare the English descriptions with the German descriptions. So I can insert this to my entity grid. Or I want to identify the, um, the parent entity of a query, so the info provider of a query, for example, here. Or let's say I want to insert the field or the column last use date. So I can also do this by just double click on the column or if I click on the checkbox. This information in the entity grid offers me first insights if I want to identify, for example, all queries that have not been executed for a long time. So I can just activate the sorting and here I see some queries which were um, used, for example, um, in 2016. If the layout of the entity grid has been changed, then it can be saved here by this button or you can also reset to the default layout by clicking on this button here in the toolbar. All displayed objects here or a specific selection can also be exported to Excel. So therefore, let's select those six queries and then I can click on this button and I could either say I want to export all 274 queries or only the six selected. So I can click on the second entry here and then um, performer suite generates an Excel file where all the information we inserted to the entity grid will be displayed in the form of an Excel file. So here you can see the results. The parent entity is here and also things like the description, the last use date and the technical name of the selected queries. Okay, in the context menu here we can find some more options, for example, to sort objects um, or to group by a specific column. So there are some group options. So for example, I could group the objects by the parent entity by clicking on, um, by right clicking on this column and then I can click on group by this column. So now I can check, for example, which queries are um, on top of this composite provider. So the answer is two queries. I can remove this layout or this grouping by showing the group panel again and then right click on this and then I can click on ungroup. So now I, um, I recreated the initial layout. So this context menu is available in some contexts where you find grid-like views. 
The performer suite shows us all the objects in the system, so it is crucial that there are good search functions to be able to identify all the relevant objects. The performer suite offers some of these functions. So first you can use the classic column search via the filter row. So I could insert here, for example, a specific prefix. I can also work with this wildcard in the form of star. And then I can, for example, so, uh, do such search operations. I can also combine multiple columns with each other. So I can also insert this kind of value into the um, row filter row, and so on. So this is the first way how I can find relevant objects. Depending on what format is found in the column, the input possibility also varies. So if I, for example, want to add filter to, the, to this column, or let's say um, this column, I'm able to um, select a specific date here, for example. In this upper area, I'm able to remove all my filters. So if I remove them, I will see all the objects once again without any filter. Here you can also search for technical names again or the description and you're also possible to select in the drop down this not contained um, operation. So I can say I want to find all the queries without the prefix set poor poor for example. So this is what you can do with those filter operations. Then the next thing you can do, you can also search for multiple technical names. So let's assume that you have several technical names and you want to find in the entity grid uh, all the queries. So therefore you can click on this button, multi-line filter, and then you can insert the technical names of the queries, click on OK, and then as you can see, the seven queries are displayed here. And once again, I can remove the filters by this button. If these filter functions are not sufficient for you, you can perform complex filter operations with the so-called filter editor here. So the filter editor allows users to define complex filter criteria with an on almost unlimited number of filter conditions combined by logical operators. So let's define a sample filter rule. I want to see all the ADSOs that start with Z, do not have ZM in their technical name and have been changed in the last year. So therefore, first I have to display the object type advanced DSOs. So we have 400 ADSOs. Then I open the filter editor once again. I create a new, I create a new condition here. So first the technical name um, starts with Z, a new condition. Then the technical name um, does not contain does not contain the value cm. And last but not least, the change date is prior this year. And now I can apply this. And as you can see, we're able to see those objects here which were changed last year, as you can see here, and not in this year, and have a Z and so on, their technical name. Okay, so these conditions can also be combined via an OR operator, and at the same time, you're also able to add some custom expressions, and so on. Okay, so once again, I remove all the filter and go back to my queries. So we have learned that all the synchronized properties concerning the objects in the grid can be searched. At the same time, it is also possible to add information manually for objects with two functions, the grid comments and the categories. So let's start with the grid comments. Therefore, I will open the settings and I will jump to the tab general and then comments and custom fields. So here you can find the so-called grid comments. And here, I, as you can see, we have five grid comments available per language and I can define them. So I can decide um, what the name should be of the column of this grid comment. So let's say I want to enter the person responsible for a specific object and therefore we need to enter responsibility here. This is my first grid comment and I will save this. After inserting this grid comment name, so after I 
gave the grid comment, the first grid comment, the name responsibilities, I'm able to select the grid comment in the column chooser. So I will go to the column chooser and then I will go to custom data. So the grid comments, as well as all other columns that are not automatically filled by the synchronization, but by the interaction of performance with users, can be found in this custom data tab. So when the new grid comment has been inserted, let me do this, it's here, responsibility. So this is our grid comment. And now I can enter a value to one object, or for one object or for multiple objects. So let's select all of those queries and then I can right click on the um, on the fields and I can click on edit grid comments. And I can say Alex is responsible for those seven queries and now this value is integrated into the entity grid for those queries. So the entered values can be used for future search activities. So I can just simply search for all the queries with Alex. Um, uh, where Alex is integrated for the grid comment responsibilities. It is even possible to integrate those values um, to the documentation. So this is also possible and we will um, talk about this in the docu in a DocuPerformer chapter. If predefined values should be assigned to the objects, this can be done via the categories. So once again I have to go to the settings because the categories can also be maintained and defined here in the settings. I will click once again on general and custom uh, comments and custom fields and here you can find the categories. And first I have to define a name for my category for this additional field. So let's use this category field for assignment of objects to different business lines. So I will first define the co a column name, it is business lines, and then I can add five categories to this column, which I can select afterwards. So my first category will be, um, will be finance. The second one will be sales and distribution. Then I have also marketing, control, then controlling, and last but not least, supply chains, supply chain management. Okay. I will define my five category values and I can save the settings to apply the changes. After saving the settings, I'm able to assign one or multiple objects to the predefined values. So I assign, for example, those queries by right clicking on them and then I have to click on others. And here I can set the additional field. And as you can see, we can find those defined values um, again in this context menu. So let's say those queries, or I assign them to, for example, finance. As you can see, this business line column was added to the grid. And now I can also search for finance, for example, and find the, those queries. Last but not least, I want to talk about an alternative view that allows performance with users to find matching objects based on dependencies the so-called relations use. So the relation view is only available for BW and S4 system. And as you can see, it is not an offline view, but a connection is required. So on the left side, you can first select on which basis certain objects should be displayed. So if I want to display all queries based on a specific info provider, I would first have to select by info provider here and click on queries on the left side and here on the right side I can then select an info provider. So let's select for example this composite provider and the result is displayed to me here below. So all of these objects or all those queries are on top of this composite provider. You can also use this function for example to display all the um, function modules based on a specific function group like here or, for example, if you want to identify all the planning functions based on a specific um, based on a specific aggregation level, and so on. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation because I want to summarize this lesson. For each system, there is an entity grid and uh, objective type selection. The layout of the performance suite always remains identical. Only the available functions and object types vary per selected connector. 
In the entity grid, there are several filter options, as well as the relation view to find relevant objects. So we have seen that a lot of valuable insights can already be gathered without even having to use any of System Scout's analysis functions. The objects can be enriched with grid comments as well as categories to increase the information content. The column chooser provides many more SAP-related and custom columns. Okay, so this lesson was the last one for the first chapter. I hope you were able to gather some basic knowledge and now you feel ready to learn more about the products of the Performer Suite. All the best and see you soon. Bye-bye.